Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Peace be upon you all and welcome to the channel. In this uh, video tutorial, we will be covering elongations or al mudud, uh, discussing the types of mudud, <clears throat> and also we will be covering the first type of the mudud or the strongest type. Uh, and then the other lectures will cover the remaining types. Met is elongation as a singular, mudud is the plural. And before we start, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Alhamdulillah rabbil alameen, wa salatu wa salamu ala ashrafil anbiya wal mursaleen, wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man tabi'ahum bi ihsanin ila yawm al-deen, warda Allahumma anna ma'ahum ajma'een, Allahumma ameen. We spoke of the elongations in the Arabic tutorial, if you have watched it. I highly doubt anyone would watch those videos. <laughs> Mainly because there are better videos, of course, on YouTube. Uh, however, elongations in uh, Quranic recitation or in Tajweed have a d different criteria compared to Mudud in uh, Arabic reading. So the elongations here are connected to what is referred to as a haraka or movement. Haraka does not literally mean movement in this scenario. It means the number uh, of seconds or the amount of time for the elongation to last. That is what is referred to as a haraka. Normally, you have the choice of two harakas or harakatan four or arba harakat and lastly six or sitta to harakat there are other recitation dialects that extend it to eight and ten but we are uh, abiding by the rules of hafsa and asim for this recitation so we will be covering which mudud have only two which mudud have four and which mudud have six the length of a haraka is the amount of time required to either bend your extended finger or extend your bent finger. I honestly do not remember the actual anatomical names for these movements. I think it was, this was flexion, if I recall correctly. I will have to revise. I have not taught anatomy and physiology in quite a while. <laughs> So the amount of time it takes to clench your fist <clears throat> with each finger individually <coughs> or extend each finger individually, that is the amount uh, that is the amount called haraka or the amount of time required for one haraka or one elongation. So if you are using two harakas, you will extend two fingers or bend two fingers four harakas, four fingers, six harakas, six fingers, and so on and so forth. I still use my fingers to count four and six till this very day because when I recite the Quran and elongate without counting, I tend to either elongate for less than what is required or longer than what is required. Uh, and unless you wish to test your lung capacity with elongations, <laughs> I would recommend using your fingers to count. With two harakas, you do not really need to count. Uh, you will see in the last lecture of this tutorial, uh, sorry, for uh, Mudud tutorial, for the elongation tutorial, we are discussing natural med, which is not really considered an elongation because it is only two harakas. Proper elongations are these two and above. <coughs> so with that, we can take our mnemonic to help us remember the types of mudud that we have before we actually take the first one. This is the mnemonic. It is a sentence that tells you which mudud or which elongations are the strongest and then it lists them ordinarily. Aqwa, which is the superlative for Qawi, meaning strongest. Aqwa al-Mudud, the strongest of the elongations are, or is, sorry, since this is superlative. Lazim, this is the first one. 
لازم فما and then uh, sorry I need to remove this فما تصل It is really difficult to write Arabic, especially with the dots uh, using a graphics tablet. Fa'atasal. Fa'aridun. I am writing the diacritics uh, to help people who wish to practice their Arabic further. Uh, practice it easier through through this lecture. Fa dun fa dun fi sal fa dun. This is a noon dun fi salin fa badal. This is the weakest one. The fa here is a prefix to indicate and then fa ba del. This is the weakest one. We will write them uh, in a, a branched uh, diagram to help uh, memorize them easier. But I wanted to cover the uh, that I wanted to cover the mnemonic in case anyone was interested. المدودي. ذو is not part of the name of the met ذو in Arabic uh, means uh, you could say he who is uh, or uh, he who is from or pertaining to it could also mean pertaining to it is somewhat difficult to define without an example so I will give an example now uh, if anyone has played Assassin's Creed in particular Assassin's Creed 2 for with regards to Ezio the name of the main protagonist he is called Ezio Auditore the I believe that was the genitive in Italian Firenze which means Ezio of Florence of Florence the city of Florence of Florence that is his city or that is his birthplace this could be defined as do and as an example we will take Prophet Jonah peace be upon him uh, the one who was swallowed by the whale his uh, hypocorism is referred to as Zu Anun. The one of the whale. The one of the whale. So that is what Zu. And there's also another prophet, uh, Ezekiel. Prophet Ezekiel, peace be upon him. Ezekiel, I believe that is the correct spelling in English, I could be wrong, is Zu Al Kifl. And I believe that is how he obtained this name from this word. So that is Zu. Now uh, I will write the Mudud in a branched diagram. So the strongest one we have is lazim, which means uh, mandatory or mandatory or obligatory, however you wish to define it. Which means that you must elongate it. And here I will write down the number of harakas, six. And we will cover lazim shortly uh, uh, in, uh, after we are done with the list then we have muttasil
and that that means connected and the next video actually covers what connected means because this is actually a re-recording uh, as with the previous video I discovered that this video also was recorded with my microphone muted unfortunately so I am re-recording it عارض للسكون and uh, عارض means opposer or, or opponent of سكون opposer of سكون سكون uh, and this can either be two four or six <clears throat> then we have منفصل which means disconnected منفصل that is disconnected and this is four harakas some people say four four to five harakas I will keep it as one number to avoid confusion and I normally use four harakas when I recite the Quran finally or actually as a penultimate elongation we have badal which means um, alter an alternate or substitute or the changed or the transformed and you will know why it is referred to as such in the last video for mudud inshallah and god willing and this is only two harakas there is also another med which is explained alongside badal it is not part of the branch because these letters require a vowel this med however does not it is a very special med called med lean and i believe lean uh, means ease or convenience or simple and that can be two four or six we will cover this extremely briefly once we start with lazim however uh, the lecture for lean will be with badal inshallah bi'ithnillah and god willing okay so let us move on to lazim and then we will take examples for lazim before we end the lecture so for madd lazim this med comes in one word and I specify this because there is a mat that requires two words instead of one word. And as we said, it is six harakat. What are the criteria for this mat? You must have a vowel. So let us take alif, for example. And there are annotations in the Quran, which I will describe uh, in a separate video. What does each annotation mean? But there is an annotation in the Quran above vowel letters shaped as such. And if you have watched the Arabic tutorial, we discuss this as Hamzit Mad, elongation Hamza. So you will always, well, I should not say always, most of the time you will find this annotation above vowel letters. However, since some mudud do not use this annotation, I would strongly suggest remembering the rule of vowel identification. A vowel is a letter that has a sukun above it. And as I said, most of the time people do not even write the sukun because it is obvious. Preceded by a letter that carries a diacritic derived from the vowel. So alif, fatha, waw, dhamma, ya, kasra. Here is what differentiates lazim from other mudud or other elongations. The letter following the vowel 
must either have a shadda above it or or aw in arabic must have a sukun above it when these prerequisites are met this is referred to as maddilazm so you elongate for six harakat which is around around possibly six seconds give or take now in maddilazm you have two types i know i said one word there is an exception to that rule which we will see once we take examples and how we will transform this into this rule here there is maddilazm kalimi you do not have to know the categorizations. This is trivium. You can simply recognize these and wait for the example and all will be clear inshallah. This is extra information. If you wish to know of it, go ahead. If not, you will not lose uh, anything if you do not. Kalimi is the adjective for word. So it comes in a word or harfi which comes in a letter that is the adjective for the word letter in the arabic tutorial series we discussed certain prep prepositions such as fi which means in or inside because it only has two letters grammatically speaking it is referred to as a letter instead of a word because it is it is a small word so it is referred to as a harf instead of a kalima but this is grammatically here we mean it literally harfi as in one letter and the kalimi is further subdivided into two forms muthaqqal which means heavy, heavy on the tongue, not heavy in weight. And mukhaffaf, which means light on the tongue or smoother on the tongue to, to enunciate light. Which diacritic causes a heavy weight? It is the shad. And which uh, diacritic causes a lighter weight the sukun so this here is maddilazim kalimi because it is in a word muthaqqal because it has a shadda this is mukhaffaf because it has a sukun if you do not know these names it will not affect the mad you will elongate its six harakat whether this scenario manifests or this scenario manifests it is exactly the same Harfi is normally mukhaffaf. I do not seem to recall there is a, a, a scenario or a condition where it is a muthaqqal. Now let us take examples. We are done with the theoretical portion. So for references here, I will have Al-Fatiha, the opening of the book. Surah to Maryam, uh, surah, uh, the chapter of uh, Lady Mary, peace be upon her, the mother of Prophet Jesus or Prophet Yeshua, peace be upon him. Then we have Surah Al-Baqarah, the cow. Surah to Yunus, which is the uh, chapter of Prophet Jonah, peace be upon him. And Surah to Yusuf, the uh, chapter uh, for Prophet Joseph, peace be upon him. This is a, a, an extremely famous surah because we recite this in all of our prayers, in all of our raka'at. So you will always recite maddilazim here. Now let us take a look. You have dad, shadda, fatha. Shadda does not matter. We look at the fatha. And then you have an alif. An alif with an annotation for the mad here or the elongation preceded by a fatha automatically means this is a vowel letter. Here, this is also a vowel letter, but it lacks the elongation hamza because this is a natural hamza, a uh, natural mad, sorry, or natural elongation. So it, this is not technically considered a mad. 
whereas this is six harakas, so it must have the annotation. After the alif, you see a letter here with a shadda above it. So this means this automatically becomes a maddilazm. If you wish to remember that this is kalimi because it is in one word, muthaqqal because it has a shadda, that is extra information. If you do not wish to know it, you will recite it the same way. Here is how it sounds. I used my fingers to count six harakas or sitta taharakat. 99.9% of uh, let me switch here for a quick a quick moment of the kalimi. Uh, sorry, 99.9% per .9 of the maddilazim is kalimi muthaqqal. There is only one word in the Quran that has madd kalimi mukhaffaf. This is also trivium. Uh, if you have a competition pertaining to Quran and you wish to add that question in your uh, trivia night, you can go ahead and uh, do so. <laughs> Here is the exception. Maddilazim kalimi mukhaffaf. This, uh, to give you context, this is the verse that describes the Pharaoh's death, uh, the Pharaoh of Prophet uh, Moses, uh, Moses uh, or Prophet Musa, peace be upon him. Uh, when the Pharaoh was drowning, he uh, said that he believes uh, in God, though, as you can see, uh, if, if you read the verse, he was not very truthful and sincere about it. He just wanted to do so to escape death. So God tells him now, now you believe uh, at the moment of your death. Now let us take a look at this word and analyze it. You have a fatha followed by an alif met followed by a lamb with a sukun. This annotation indicates sukun. Uh, most books use this shape. In the Quran, you will see this a lot, which indicates sukun. But do not worry, I will cover these differences in annotation in uh, in a separate lecture, inshallah. So this will be Anna. Now you decide to believe. And there is an interesting story about uh, the Pharaoh's death. I believe he was Ram uh, Ramses II, if I recall correctly. Uh, a French archaeological team discovered the body of this pharaoh. Uh, yeah, this pharaoh here. And one member, I honestly do not remember the name of the, the scientist, unfortunately. But it is a very famous story. If you search for it online, I, you should find it. He discovered, uh, he um, stated and concluded that this particular pharaoh died uh, from drowning, which is what happened to the Pharaoh of Prophet Moses. He died in the Red Sea in a portion near the Sinai Peninsula. His team told him, do not state this publicly, do not publish this conclusion. He asked them why. They replied that should he publish this conclusion, it will prove that the Quran is correct and that the Muslims are correct. Then he inquired about the, the belief of Islam or Muslims and the Quran, what is stated in the Quran. His French team told him that in the Quran, it states that the Pharaoh died from drowning, but his body was washed ashore, as opposed to what is mentioned in the Bible, where it is stated that his body was lost at sea. Once he discovered this information, alhamdulillah, he became a Muslim. He accepted Islam immediately, as opposed to his team, which I honestly do not understand how he could know the truth and then reject it. Though it is not surprising. It, it is rather common. If you read history, you will see it. If you see it in present day, you will see it as well. So yeah, this is the backstory behind this verse. 
Now, this is the kalimi, the in one word. Let us take a look at the harfi. So we have Surah Al-Baqarah, the second surah or the second chapter in the Quran. I, I would highly recommend this surah uh, if you wish to learn about the story of the cow. It is, it is a, a hilarious story, but also a very sad story filled with morals and principles. And also it teaches you about loyalty and disloyalty, particularly from people. If you uh, immerse yourself within the online realm, I would highly recommend reading this verse because it teaches you about the intentions of people online. Uh, you may you might ask yourself how could uh, how could the Quran speak about people online when internet was not even present at the time of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Read the surah and you will see what I mean. It speaks about uh, disloyalties which you will find online. It speaks about whims and lust which you will also find abundant online as well so if you uh, associate yourself with the online realm i would highly recommend protecting yourself with the surah i will also be creating a video as part of my uh, series uh, awareness series known as the straight path or as sarat al mustaqim to give uh, my experiences online and how people function online, even if people will disagree with me, and I am certain they will, they will discover the truth later on, and then they will agree with me, <laughs> which is always the case with the people I tend to warn or forewarn. Now let us take a look at this verse here. It is only three letters. This is not a word. These are three letters connected together. Alif, Lam, Mim. Now, how would I pronounce this? You would pronounce each letter individually. Alif, Lam, Mim. As you can see, the annotation is on two letters, but not on the first letter, Alif. You do not have to know this rule that I'm about to mention. You can simply depend on the annotation which will always be there for the madd al lazim al harfi once you see the annotation extended six harakat and that is it there is a rule however why there are certain letters that are elongated and why certain letters are not elongated let us take alif lam mim the first verse of surah al baqarah or the cow the chapter of the cow how would I identify? Let us say I am. I do not wish to depend on the annotations. How would I know if a letter should be elongated or not? You transform the letter into a word. So how do I spell alif as a word? I spell it as such. A lif. What about lam? I spell it as such. Lam. What about meme? I spell it as a word like so. Meme. This word here, which pertains to the letter Alif, does not have a vowel to begin with. So this will not have maddilazim or the lazim elongation. What about lamb? Here I have a vowel followed by a letter with a sukun. So this becomes maddilazin. So I will elongate this letter as if I am elongating it in this word. It is only written in a letter. Lastly, we have a vowel here followed by a letter with a sukun. So this is maddilazin. The only difference is it is in a letter, but as I said, you, you will have to transform the letter into a word. You do not have to memorize this rule. You can simply depend on the annotation. However, if you are reading in a mushaf that does not have the annotations, it is highly advisable for you to learn this rule. So let us take a look. 
and see how we will recite this. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytani ar-rajim. Bismillahi ar-rahman ar-rahim. Alif laam meem. Six and six. It will be a total of twelve. This uh, med or this elongation will test lung capacity <laughs> but uh, as you can expand your lung capacity in GTA San Andreas by swimming in the water and diving a lot through a frequent recitation you will feel that your lungs are able to handle longer and longer mudut or harakat let us take another example Surah to Yusuf. If you are feeling sad or depressed about an event or about an incident or about a memory or about life in general, read the entirety of this chapter. No person reads this chapter feeling sad and finishes the chapter without feeling happy or joyous. So this is the cure to sadness and depression. I will also create a video uh, in the, the series of The Straight Path regarding depression. And do not worry, I speak from knowledge because I studied depression as part of my educational background. So I know what depression is and I know the truth of depression, which is what people are unaware of, unfortunately, because Governments want people to depend on corporations and feed their economy through capitalism. We will discuss this in a separate video, inshallah. As you can see here, one letter, first the first letter does not have annotation. One letter only has the annotation and the third letter does not have annotation. If you have watched my Arabic tutorial, the first video or the first two videos because they were divided into two parts you will recall that I said do not memorize uh, the letters that end with an alif so this is the letter B most people unfortunately most teachers call it B with a Hamza which is incorrect it is B without a Hamza the same as Ra. The letter Ra is spelt as Ra. It is not spelt as Ra. Of course, this is an incorrect translation because you would say Ra, not Ra, because it is a heavy letter. So this is incorrect. The reason this is incorrect is from the Maddilazim. The Maddilazim did not have uh, the annotation on the Ra. Why? Because after the vowel, there is nothing. So there could, the Maddilazim will never manifest because it, the conditions are not met. Hence why the people who add Hamzas at the end of certain letters are incorrect. Because uh, if you have a Hamza here, then this will automatically be a Mad. This will be a Mad too. But since it, this is not the case, and we extract Arabic grammar from the Quran, that means this is incorrect. It is Ra, not Ra. This is incorrect. Hence why only the Lam has the Maddilazim. So it will be Alif Lam Ra. That is it. Now here is the most challenging Maddilazim Harfi, the beginning of Surah to Maryam, or the chapter of Lady Mary. <coughs> As you can see, 6, 6, and 6. So that is a total of 18. <laughs> but it is rather simple, do not worry. It may appear as challenging, but simply take a deep breath and you will be able to pronounce the elongations flawlessly. كاف ها يا عين صاد. You may have noticed that this 
letter does not have a vowel. The letter Ain here is written as such. This is not a vowel. This is not a harf med. Why? Because it does not have a kasra. It has a fatha. This condition is known as lean. So this becomes harf lean, not harf med. Which takes, uh, which assumes six harakat, if it is associated with med We we will discuss this further in uh, the last video of the mudud, inshallah. But for now, just know that there are exceptions because uh, for meddilazim here it is not meddilazim, it is meddilin. Lean. And because it is associated with meddilazim, it must take six harakat. As opposed to what we mentioned earlier with meddilin, that it could be two or four as well. But here it is mandatory to be six. Why? Because maddilazim is the strongest of the elongations. So its number of harakat overpower the number of available choices for lean. Now, I would like to take this opportunity to reply to a video I saw of the. I forgot. Uh... I forgot what was his name. I normally recognize him on the cover of the Family Feud board game that we have here in uh, in our bookstores. Uh, uh, Steve Harpy, yeah, Steve Harpy. I, he was in an advertisement or a documentary of some sorts regarding religion, and he was stating that uh, all religions are correct because all religions lead to heaven which is incorrect it is unfair that i adhere to a particular belief and someone else adheres to a particular belief and both of us enter heaven then what is the point of differences or that distinction if we all reach heaven then these religions are the same and they are or they were because each prophet came with the, with Islam. After his death, the religion was changed and adulterated to give rise to various other religions such as Christianity and Judaism. They are originally called Islam. Prophet Adam came with the message of Islam. Prophet Enoch, Prophet uh, Noah, Prophet Seth, Prophet Mihlail, Prophet Abraham, Prophet uh, Joshua, Prophet Isaac, Prophet, J Prophet Jacob, Prophet Joseph, Prophet Jonah, Prophet Lot, Prophet Moses, Prophet Solomon, Prophet Ezekiel, Prophet David, Prophet Samuel, Prophet Joshua, Prophet uh, Jesus or Prophet uh, Yeshua, Prophet uh, Muhammad, peace be upon them all. They all came with one message that God is one. That is it. So uh, he went to visit, I think it was Abu Dhabi or Dubai in Emirates, and he saw a mosque across from a church named Mary, the mother of Jesus. And he looked into the camera and said, can you believe a mosque that has the name Jesus on it? And I found that odd because if you are speaking about religion, you must be educated in at least the religion you are speaking of. So how can you speak about Islam without knowing that Prophet Jesus or Prophet Yeshua is one of our prophets that we must believe in? You cannot be a Muslim if you disbelieve in one prophet out of all of them. If you disbelieve in one, you are not a Muslim. We have, uh, I will come back to this in a bit. We have Iman or faith. And Iman is built on f uh, six pillars. So the first pillar is believing in God. That is the first pillar. If you do not believe in God, you are not a Muslim. 
believing in God's angels. So if you disbelieve in the existence of angel Gabriel, peace be upon him, or angel uh, Raphael, or angel Michael, peace be upon them all, you cannot be a Muslim. Believing in the books of God, so the Torah and the Injil or the Bible, before they were changed, of course, believing in his messengers i will cover i will return to this point in a bit i just want to finish the other pillars believing in the messengers of god believing in the day of judgment and the hereafter which i will cover in the straight path uh, series uh, let us say the hereafter because it covers hell and heaven as well as the judgment at the day of judgment too and believing in fate so people uh, so there is a difference between fate and karma which i will also discuss in the straight path series inshallah so here we believe in all of god's messengers from prophet adam the father of humanity To Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon them all. So we believe, if 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 a Muslim says, "I do not believe in Prophet Jesus or Prophet Yeshua because he is the prophet of the Christians," he is automatically not a Muslim. He leaves Islam at the moment because we must believe in all of them. And in our belief, we also revere them, we respect them, and we love them, as opposed to certain countries where they mock messengers uh, through uh, caricatures or through cartoons. They mock the messengers, they mock God, which is unacceptable for us in Islam, because in Islam we have sanctities, inviolable sanctities, as opposed to certain societies uh, pointed towards the western region <laughs> or they could be in the east but adhere by western standards and these standards have no sanctities everything can be violated unfortunately which explains why uh, rape crimes are high in those societies because they have no sanctities they do not treat a woman as a sanctity they treat her as well, I, I I believe it is obvious how they treat women. Uh, I mean, it is it is suffi uh, suffice to say that, uh, or I should say, it is adequate to simply see what Holland does for women with regards to prostitution and how they advertise and parade them, and you can see how uh, sanctimonious uh, women are in that in those societies. So we will never mock any of God's messengers, which is why uh, people in the West or the East, non-Muslims, certain non-Muslim groups and governments, mock Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, knowing that we as Muslims will never mock Prophet Jesus, for example, or Prophet Moses, because we love and respect all of the prophets which says a lot about islam or muslims or the behaviors and mannerisms of muslims and the uh, i do not want to say manners because whoever lacks an aspect cannot provide it so if a person lacks respect and lacks manners they will never provide respect or manners so i am surprised that he is advertising that in islam it is rather odd to revere prophet jesus when we would be honored to have a mosque that bears his name and i do not know if he is ignorant and spreading this ignorant inadvertently or if he is knowledgeable but willingly and purposefully spreading this ignorance either way it is unacceptable People should read about Islam before speaking about Islam. Do not hear 
about Islam, hear from Islam, which means that you should read about Islam before speaking, which also reminded me of a, um, an, uh, a debate that I entered long ago when I, when I used to be uh, in the online realm. Uh, about a Hispanic in, uh, individual living in America, he was talking about how he uh, he was justifying his atheism because of religious prejudice that he suffers from in Southern America. And he generalized and said all religions are evil or all religions are bad or all religions are bigoted. Then I asked him a simple question. Did you read about the dogma of Islam, the teachings of Islam, racism in Islam? He said, no. Then I told him, then do not speak because you have no, you have no knowledge. If you wish to speak about Christianity, go ahead. I am a Muslim, alhamdulillah, and I take pride in my Islam. And I know that Islam forbids racism. So it will never uh, treat you with prejudice if you are a non-Muslim, provided that you do not harm us as Muslims. If you can coexist with us, no harm will befall you. And I was surprised by the amount of ignorance in people that I meet online when they speak about Islam and the scriptures of Islam when they have not even read about it. Uh, so I chose this chapter because it speaks about uh, the virgin birth of Prophet Jesus, uh, as opposed to what some people believe that he, uh, uh, God forbid this, of course, uh, the Jews believe that he is the son of fornication or adultery. God forbid that a prophet would be, uh, or Lady Mary herself, uh, the, uh, uh, the manifestation of purity and cleanliness would succumb to such deeds. <coughs> And here it says, pure son. If you would like to know more about the virgin birth and his miracle speaking in infancy, he was one of the four infants that spoke in infancy, Prophet uh, Jesus or Prophet Yeshua, peace be upon him, or Prophet Isa in Arabic, peace be upon him. I apologize for the digression, but I am a Muslim before I am a teacher. So I wanted to clarify these issues before I continued. And uh, we actually finished with uh, the Maddilazim or uh, the mandatory Madd. In the next videos, inshallah, we will speak about the other Mudud. And once we are done with Mudud, we will uh, segue into other rules of Tajweed. I believe I may upload the Mudud uh, 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 videos first and then uh, once I am done with the other videos, I will upload those as well separately or I will see if uh, I tend to normally prefer uploading all the videos together, uh, but I may uh, function differently this time. We will see what happens. I hope this video was beneficial and helpful to you all. I will see you in the next video, inshallah. Enjoy the rest of your day. Be safe and take care.